Introducing health and wellness advocate, veteran international real estate investment expert, author and speaker, Adiel Gurel. Health tips, fitness tips, nutrition and well-being, world-class experts, all right here on my podcast, The Adiel Gurel Show. Hi, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here today. I'm very glad that you're here with us and you can benefit from the great reservoir of knowledge and life-changing materials from Dr. Lu. So today we are interviewing Dr. Shang Hong Lu and the general title would be Environmental Challenges to Health. Shang Hong Lu is an MD, a PhD, double board certified in internal medicine and anti-aging and regenerative medicine over the past 20 years based on genetic and environmental assessments dr lu has been solving numerous untreatable chronic complex illnesses by focusing on naturopathic detoxification support with genomic guidance and practical environmental assessment organic whole foods and a plant-based lifestyle and re-establishing neuroendocrine immune homeostasis. So I think, you know, I deserve a medal for saying all those <laughs> words. But now, Dr. Lou, it's really a joy to have you here. It's a great pleasure to work with you guys. So, you know, you, cl you clearly, and I know you, you've followed a fascinating path to where you are. So if you can take us through your own, your own path and how it led you to this point. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. I grew up in China, so which is a big hot topic right now. And um, so I grew up in, in the two traditions of medicine. My mother is a Chinese uh, first cardiologist, the first, uh, you know, cardiothoracic kind of a specialist in, in vascular health. And my grandmother is a Chinese medicine doctor. So you can see I'm kind of like in between the two traditions. And I watched the power of both. I watched how my mother rescue people's lives when they're dying. I also watched my grandmother teaching people about self-care. So I kind of watched them, you know, they, they both are growing old in their own ways. And what I really love is the integration of the both. So I followed my mother's path. I came to United States and looking for really the freedom of thinking, which is actually something we take for granted here. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not always free everywhere in the world. And I also wanted to be a PhD to discover the root cause of hypertension, because I, when we know hypertension is one of the global disease that causing stroke, heart disease, and a lot of vascular insufficiency that, that dis disables people, right? So I want to study that. I came and become a PhD student. And then I went to uh, UC San Francisco, moving to the West to learn about genetics of hypertension. I was a published author in hypertension research. And then during these years, I learned that Basic research is really hard to do in this country. So most of the research are funded by pharmaceutical intervention. You know, pharmaceuticals actually give us money and that become a bias issue, right? You study drug mechanism, you study how the drug can interfere. And, and also I learned, you know, hypertension is a multifactorial disease. It's not just de determined by genes. That's where I decided to go back to clinical medicine so I can develop a, you know, a on practical approach to help people with chronic disease. So I went to Oakland, Alameda County Hospital, the, the biggest, craziest county hospital. And I learned a lot of things. A lot of, I, I learned about how um, you know, culture is really big issue and then how many, many people from different country and become ill here, okay? Now people, they, they, in their country, they were not sick. When they come here, they have sickness. So I know there's some kind of American, American factors that make people sicker 
not just the white people, but you know, there's a whole different culture, which is a big eye opener. So when I moved to Mount Shasta, I decided, you know, I need to leave the noise of the large society and create my integrated medicine center. And that was a big, crazy step, you know, because in medical school, you, you, nobody teach you how to open a clinic and how do you ins and out. So it was, it was a financial struggle for myself to come to Mount Shasta and I become an ICU attendant, attending. I was a medical director for nursing home. I also had my own practice. So my journey started to switch is about 16 years ago. I came down with autoimmune, Hashimoto, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, insomnia, PVC, palpitation, and digestive issues, right? So when you start having all these issues, naturally as a medical doctor, we do all this testing. I did an echocardiogram, pulmonary function test, blood tests of different kinds. And, and that is the ironic thing. Everything was normal, normal, right? So I started to learn about what Western medicine were not seeing. Western medicine methodology were behind because they are now seeing what's causing it. They're seeing the symptom and the results of illness. Oftentimes that is too late. Okay, so many people say, well, how come, you know, I, I didn't know this. If I know cancer 10 years ahead of time, I, I could have gotten rid of it much earlier, right? Why someday we have women said, you know, I'm so healthy, feeling so good. I finally got rid of 10 years of stress and now I have breast cancer. Like uh, it's metastasis, right? So it's really something Western medicine was unable to see. That's why I decided to learn what is the American factor that is leading the world in the chronic sickness. And that my journey has been so rewarding because now I'm 15 years later, I look younger, I'm healthier than ever. So I was like, you know, people, let's look at something that Western medicine are not seeing. That's my journey. Well, it's a fascinating journey. So clearly you can say that your approach is to, to identify the root cause of what causes the disease rather than looking at what the disease is manifesting as and prescribing medicine or surgery. And it seems even logically, but since we are here, mm -hmm. what about the stress? You even mentioned as an example, the lady who got rid of 10 years of stress and then she found out she had some disease. We live in a society where stress is prevalent. Yes. Um, I see it from children. I see, you know, we are all stressed. Even yes. people who are retired seem to find yes. ways to Yes. We, f we find ways to get stressed. And, you know, ju just the news alone will make, okay. So <laughs> how does stress figure into the conglomerate of toxins that we are going to be talking about? Yes, this is a, such a good topic. And I love to go back to it many, many times. Is, um, you know, our brain actually have an old brain part, the midbrain, then the new brain, okay? The midbrain has been around for 40 million years. That's a reptile. You know, you've, you've seen the iguanas. You see how they react to shadows. They are very reactive. Our brain has 40 million years of the reactive response, okay? The new brain is our sage brain. You know, we, we have spiritual calling. We have uh, love. We have consciousness, compassion. We have uh, you know, many things that's developed from the new brain, which is incredible. That make human being very different from the iguana, right? From the reptile. But the problem is our response to stress is through a system called the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system is not controlled by consciousness. So we have you know, Dalai Lama, the yogis, they all meditate every day. Why? because they understand they all have a reptile brain that we act to things, you see? But the problem is our brain 
the, the, the new part of the brain, which is 4 million years old, is pretty old too. It has not been updated when it comes down to stress. Stress will trigger the same autonomic response between a regular person to Dalai Lama, okay? But I'm just saying that because that's the autonomic nervous system. Autonomous nervous system sends stress, increased sympathetic response, which is heart rate, elevation, uh, palpitation, blood pressure, and they, their vessel constricted, and then so they're ready to fight and flight. Also, all the other things, the parasympathetic, which is digestion, increase in growth hormone, testosterone, DHEA, those things are, you know, for, for life. Those for life things are no longer important. The stress is becoming number one. That's why the reactive patterns of things are very difficult to talk yourself out of it. Now, right now, there's a huge movement about breathing, right? Everybody talk about breathing, brain training. It's really try to train our old brain into a new brain. Because modern life stress deal, it's more like in the past, if we're isolated in the mountains, we may hear bad news, you know, every month, right? <laughs> Maybe somebody has a little horse come in and say, hey, did you hear our president is doing this? Well, today is every day, every time you open the phone, you have stressful news. Um, your neighbor gets diagnosis of cancer, your, your loved one. So it's a stress frequency is increased. Our brain doesn't know that. Our brain, the reactive part, thought it's only just once in the, you know, every month. So we are into this sympathetic overdrive on the daily basis. Over time, it become a habit. So when, when it become a habit, it's very hard to change, right? You can't, you can't change autonomic nervous system, period. And suddenly your brain is stuck. We're stuck in the stress mode. So when you go to a party, the only time to not to be stuck is to drink a bunch of alcohol or smoke tons of weed, right? <laughs> so, but you know, that's not the conscious enjoyment of life. It's really get yourself all drugged up. So that's really uh, the challenge. But we are finding good things. If you have downloaded your sympathetic on a daily basis, okay, not just when you have time, if you can do it every day, something you love to do, you actually can train your brain into a more sympathetic, parasympathetic balance. That's the good news. It's possible, but you got to do it. You got to do it because it doesn't happen naturally. <laughs> So, you know, since we can't escape it, I'm very thankful that you gave a thorough explanation of what we are exposed to. And clearly some techniques like meditation, breathing, so we can find more balance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. I mean, there are many things, but this is great. Now let's, let's move on. I mean, it makes so much sense to detox so much. You know, we get a lot of toxins from everywhere. We, what we eat, what we drink, how we live in our home. So can you start to take us on a path of what to do, like baby steps? Yes, baby step. First of all, you got to decrease the exposure, okay? Uh, people are now convinced this is the problem. People say, oh, I'm just drinking this wine. Who cares what's in the wine? Did you see my dad is drinking for 20 years and he's fine? <laughs> so I think that's the first step. So I'm asking physicians to start making talks invisible. That's really my crazy new project. I actually put away my practice for two years now to ask a physician if people have Parkinson's, if people have cancer, if they have autoimmune, if they have trouble losing weight, why don't we just take a urine test or maybe a hair analysis for mercury, for the heavy metal, and let's just see what the patient have to start with. Okay, that's the first step. 
The second step I really like is to look at the genetic. And people say, well, I've done 23 and me. That's great. It's a good place to start. Doesn't have to be too complicated. Then you put in the portal, you see how the patient environmental, we call it exposome. Like talk of, people talk about my, you know, microbiome and this, that. Exposome is, let's say, ideal. You have a special environment and you have these toxins in your life, which is very different for people that live in Alaska. You see? So you have the exposome. Then you have the genetic called the genome. Then you look at it together and say, okay, so Adil has trouble detoxifying heavy metal. Um, he has glutathione deficiency. He can't really transfer a lot of the toxins into non-toxic form. And then maybe we should start getting rid of the heavy metal first for you. And then we can, you know, based on genetic, we can give you a nutritional guidance. So that's actually pretty simple to do. Um, people say, well, Dr. Lu, everybody's toxic. Why don't we just all de detox? Well, it's not that simple a deal because <laughs> it can get really expensive. Um, and also when people are blindly detoxing, sometimes they can really challenge their immune system. Okay. So we heard all these times, people get on the juicing, they're doing all kinds of detoxing. Uh, for example, I'm going to consult on a beautiful lady from Santa Cruz. Her whole life, she did chelation. She actually developed some problems because the body doesn't want to be chelated all the time because you're not just chelating the heavy metal. You're also chelating minerals, do you see? And chronically, you may cause severe imbalance. That's why I don't really recommend those drastic invasive procedures because you think you're just doing one good thing, how do you know you are not causing the homeostasis to be so far off that it's hard to bring it back? Do you see? So that's really something um, I am proposing that making talks invisible, know your genetic. It seemed to be a lot of work at the beginning, but the result is forever, right? You say, hey, if my daughter has Crohn's disease, She's 14 years old. She's already doing surgery, losing her colon. You know, how long she's going to do that if you don't get her genetic, her environmental issues together? She's going to have other things. It's not just Crohn's disease, it's going to be colon cancer. You know, so it's really important for people to know at the beginning yes, it did a lot of work, it's not cheap, but the environmental medicine is making a tox the toxin test actually cheaper and cheaper now. So that's doable. 23andMe is $140. You get it, you start aiming at the future. So that's really the part the conventional medicine do not see. That's the amount of people we want to catch. Yeah. So you start by having somebody who knows, such as yourself, Look at your genome because you got that test. Look at your specific environment, which yours is different than mine, is different than Chad's. And now you have the map to see what needs to be cleared. I think I really like yes. that. But since you talked about heavy metals, can you talk a little bit more about heavy metals in general, how we get exposed you know, to them, how most people can at least begin to clear them out? Yes, so heavy metal is a, it's a, it's a group of metal. So if you look at the elemental table, there are many of them on, on the heavy metal part. Heavy metal is natural, okay? So we no human being have no heavy metal. That's impossible. We grow up here and in Mount Shasta is aluminum. You know, who knows, in, you know, the, in, on the East Coast, burn coal. Coal is the most major release of heavy metal mercury the dental fillings, right? So you, you aim at the most common one, which is aluminum, lead, mercury, cadmium. Some nickel, some silver, they are not as harmful, but what happened is heavy metal cannot be detoxified by just drinking water or having a good bowel movement, okay? Heavy metal tend to be getting into the body, it binds to your protein, so in order to remove it, 
you have to have a binder. So binder is not a biochemical reaction, it's a, a physical reaction, okay? So, so far we know EDTA, DMSA do bind the heavy metal. And they need to be a strong binder. They need to go inside your body, not just in the colon. So most people do chlorella, cilantro, spirulina, even horseradish, you know, from Japanese sushi food. They are gut binders. They, they just bind whatever is in your gut. So that can maybe prevent you from absorbing it from that meal, right? But you got to have a binder that's systemically delivered into your body, into the brain. Think about detox your brain. Don't just detox your skin, <laughs> you know, get the brain clean up. So you got to have a systemic binder that has to be safe. You don't want the binder to bind your magnesium, your potassium, because they are actually intracellular cations that stabilize your heart. So you don't want to bind something that damage your major minerals. You also need to have a mineral replacement after you are doing the binding. So it's really, really important to know that. Now, we recently are working with a, a Greek um, far, farmer, pharmacologist, right? He's also a cardiothoracic surgeon. So it's really my pleasure to meet him, to meet him a couple of years ago in his clin clinic, in his lab called the Metron Nutraceutical. Dr. Nicholas um, is fantastic. Last name is Sericus. So this little bit of complicated last name, but he has created the systemic binder that is patented and is delivered safely into people's intracellular structure. And you can actually do it every day. I've been doing it for two years and it's, it's easy, no, no funny taste, very good. Very good to know. So mercury seems to be the most recognizable metal of that sort. We talk about getting it from fish. We talked about other sources. You talked about fillings. Dental. There is yes. still a big uh, controversy. People talk about, well, if you already have a crown in your mouth and it seems to be stable, do you really want to break it up now? Because just a vapor. So can you talk a little bit about mercury specifically? Yes, I like to talk about the filling because um, uh, that's American factor. I think it's, <laughs> um, we have such a great dental care here. When I was a kid, I, I have all kinds of dental problems and they don't just drag you in because we don't have anesthesia. You have to actually drill the hole when the kids Ooh. are screaming. Ooh. So Americans are very good. They, they, they start cleaning the teeth, you know, and we found the mercury filling are much more common than people from Europe or even from China, from different countries. The problem with the mercury filling is they, the older it is in your tooth, the more easily it gets released, okay? So if you just new, it doesn't get released as much as old. So if you have five of them, by the time you're 50, you probably will have mercury in your body, in your bone, in your brain, probably in the fat. All my patients with a BMI over 30 have very high level of mercury and other heavy metals. So, so, so they actually store in the fat, okay? So what do you do? They say, hey, I have mercury. Um, what, is, what is the harm of mercury, right? Mercury is a neurotoxin, it's a known neurotoxin. Now, how much to have presentation? That's individual difference. If you have a lot of good glutathione to deal with the stress, you're probably better. If you have glutathione deficiency, you're gonna have bad you know, new things happening in your brain, such as depression, memory loss, uh, ADD, um, agitation, anger control. You know, sometimes we, we send poor man to the anger control camp, but they are just mercury poison. Uh, that's not going to be helpful. So all mental doctors, you know, we call psychiatrists, psychologists, they really need to measure neurotoxins and mercury is one of them. So to remove it, you want your body to be in three top condition, okay? 
before you go to the dentist. Why? Because a lot of the dentists will tell you if they use fast speed drill, it actually vaporizes the mercury much more so than low speed drill. So that's one thing I learned. The other thing is the dentists who know how to remove it safely need to have a full facial cover, just your mouth out. Your mouth need to have charcoal before he start drilling. And he need to treat you with good scion and some binders before and after to prevent the amount going into your body when he was drilling. The drill has to be low speed. We talk about that. And the, the room have to be negatively charged, uh, pressure. So, so the air goes out now in the room recircling. So it's a very important, you got to get a biological dentist to do it. Um, I, I really support them because they, are, they go far beyond just making money, you know, treating your dental illness. So that's a biological dentist. Yeah. Now, now let's, we talk about two types of things in your mouth, which could contain mercury. Those are the fillings and those sound relatively simple to take care of, assuming the biological dentist does all the things you just mentioned. And you can yes. replace the filling with things like ceramic. Porcelain, ceramic. Por even gold, I think, is not that active, is it? Right, right. Gold is much, but gold is a soft metal. Yeah. So usually they put the gold with other things. So just have to be right, careful. Right, right. Okay, but what about the common case? And here I would love to know an answer. I know a lot of our viewers. Somebody has a crown. Let's talk about one crown in their mouth. The crown has been completely stable, may have been there for 30 years. Uh -huh. But the crown likely has mercury in it. Now, even if you go to a biologic dentist and they take it out mm -hmm. very carefully, what do you replace it with? Because if you don't, there's going to be a gap and that's not so good either. Right, right. So I, I think this is, uh, this is the area you have to weigh the risk versus the benefit. Um, I work with a really great pediatrician. Her name is Michelle Perrault. Oh, I know she, her. I know Michelle. You know, you know Michelle. She's great. So she has lots of dental things and she always have chest pain before that. So she has to deal with this, right? Uh, myself too. I had a very infected root canal that I took out. What to do with the empty spot is a huge challenge. For her, the, the bridges, the implants, are sometimes more controversial. You know, there is an amazing German, uh, not German, Swiss. There's a Swiss holistic center that treats cancer and everything. Mm -hmm. They actually do not recommend implants, um, especially with metal, because the metal actually form a, a focal weakness and there is a electrical current going on between the metal and your tooth. They actually don't really recommend that. They recommend zirconium, which is more like a plastic tooth uh, texture. Uh, there's new development on stem cell therapy, um, which is, I'm excited. You know, once they have, you know, can grow your own teeth, that will be the best. Uh, but right now, I don't think, unless you really are strong, uh, you have a good hormone system, your detoxification system is open. I don't really recommend hurry into putting in implants. You know, especially if you have immune issues, have cancer, maybe not putting it in. And she were, so this is her secret. I don't know if she wants the world to know that. She <laughs> actually used, a, a, she called the flipper. So she put it in, you know, so nobody can tell she has fake teeth, but she actually, that's what she does. Okay, so, but, but let's say again, let's simplify it into a specific. So one person has one, root canal, just one. And right. is right. it better to take it out and leave the gap or not to take it out at all? Uh, very good. I would do a three dimensional um, x-ray, okay? 
because root canal is this is the problem. You don't feel anything. Your body doesn't know it's infected. Um, so that's what happened to me. I was getting regular checkup. Everything looks fine, but I have to take a lot of immune support for some reason for my for my sinus symptoms. I do a lot of cleansing and it got a little bit of too much. So I got an x-ray in the biological dentist office and that root canal was almost poked through my sinus with a huge abscess. Yet I have no symptoms, you see? So I do think some, you know, some of the, the, the conventional way to look at things uh, with new modern technology, they can really show that you have a bad problem or not. Some root canal is well done. They don't have infection. I think you should just leave it there. I really do. Because if there's no infection, you take it out, then what are you going to do? You see? Stay tuned for part two of this interview. Thank you for joining us today. I know you love what's coming next in part two. Be sure to click the subscribe button for more videos.